You know, every once in a while, more often than I'd like, I, I still look around and think, my God, I can't believe this really happened. It is still surreal to me. A lot of faith. Mm -hmm. Thank God. I don't know how people get through stuff like this without faith. I really don't. Because I think that's what keeps you strong. There was the head of our herd standing over, you know, this body because he was responsible for him. And it was just very, in a way, touching. Stress has been phenomenal. Yeah. And we're always in different directions. Right. We're like ships passing in the night. We're always working. And then by the time we come in, it's dinner, we're exhausted, whatever. We haven't had time together. Well, there's no routine yet. We're still, you know, living in a trailer, living like we're camping. Grateful that even though we've had our day bad days, most of the time it's on different days. <laughs> so that's, I'm grateful for that. The, my one wish is yeah. I wish that we could have thanked every single person that helped us, and that's not possible. Right. But that, but they are, but all these people all are always in our prayers all the time. Uh, but I will tell you the most important thing is not your insurance company. Your agent, that's the person who can fight for you. Yep. All the insurance companies have the same laws, abide by the same laws, have the same rules, coverage works the same way. The person who you want in your corner is your agent. Make sure, Make sure you have a good agent. You bet your life. Basically, the role of, F of FEMA is to coordinate volunteer efforts. Right. I wanted to crawl through the television. I know. They didn't do anything. Everything was coordinated from that church, church down right. there, the First Congregational Church. It is not what we thought it was. You know, we think we're so taken care of by our government, and until you have a disaster, you no. find out that's not the case. No. Clean area up. Clean up. it up. Don't, you know. Because insurance doesn't pay for a dime of this. Right. And, and you, know, you have to remember, we're in Brimfield. Everybody lives in the woods. We're not the only people that have this problem. If it was right. just us, it would be like, yep. well, whatever, too bad for you. But you've got people all over this 39-mile path maybe not in Springfield, but in Munson and, and, and other places that are, are in the same situation that we are. They'll never be able to clean their land up in their lifetime. It wasn't. It wasn't. Yeah, and it considering wasn't there's 39 there. miles of this, yeah. Yeah. wouldn't you think the state would say, you know, we just can't leave these people at risk like this? Because if, this, if that had spread further and houses started catching and everything else, I mean... Let me tell you, I, I really did get irritated because... They, sp they sent a lot of resources down to the Brimfield State Forest. Human being, the, the homeowners are what drive this thing. They drive the economy, not the state forest. Mm -hmm. And to, to go take care of that before they step in and help the, the individual ho homeowner or, and anybody that came through this tornado, I mean, come on, give me a break. And it's still yeah. a risk. There's still 39 miles of trees on the ground. That's that risk is not over. No. It's a match, a lightning strike, anything. That's not the last fire. No. I'm sure of it. No. You know, I was raised with the attitude that, you know, you take what life gives you and you do the best you can. And, um, and that's what we're doing. We're just doing the best we can.